What's up guys, today I'm going to be showing you the simplest way to do a fade without getting lost. So take out your clipper and close it all the way. So what I like to do is I like to start off to close it all the way and start setting in my first bald guideline. You'll see a lot of people doing it with trimmers. The only thing is that with the trimmers, you might be setting in too hard of a line. So when you come back later to fade it up, it tends to be a little harder to fade out. So I like to set in the first guideline with the uh, clippers rather than trimmers and then that way it kind of like softens it a little bit and i don't spend as much time taking out the bald line you also see that when i set in the guideline i like to go all around the head and make sure that it's symmetrical um, sometimes you'll have people just fading up one side at a time and that could work too it's different for everyone but i found that this is the simplest way to keep that symmetry and to keep the fade even and that's just making sure that you're going all around the same step. You're going all around the head. You're not working in little tiny sections until it gets close to the time to detail. So right now, every step that we're doing, we're going to do it all around the head instead of doing it in little sections. And for me, I like to set in the guidelines like you'll see right now. I'll set it in on both sides and then I'll normally meet it up in the back. And this is just a tip uh to kind of like make us uh, more symmetrical like i was talking about before it just the, the whole point is to make this symmetrical because if your bald line is not even the rest of your fade is just gonna crumble if you don't have an even fade the haircut just won't look right and another good tip as well is once you're done uh meeting both of the guidelines in the back and you bald it out look in the mirror right the mirror will show you like a lot of your mistakes Sometimes when you're looking at it straight on, you can't really see it, but the mirror is really going to help you see uh, whether or not the bald line is actually even. So now I'm coming in with my trimmers and just balding out the rest of the hair that was under. And you'll see that I'm not going straight up to the line that I just created, right? The bald line I just created with the clipper, I don't want to go straight up to the line. I want to get really close to it, but I don't want to get right to it because the reason for me using the, tr the clipper, like I said, was to not create that hard line. So we're trying to go uh, just a tad bit lower than what the line that I initially created and just debulk all the hair, all the excess hair that's under with the trimmer, try to get it as close to skin so that we could go back in with the shaver and bald it out as much as we can. So now I'm going in with the shaver and it's kind of the same concept with the trimmer. I don't want to go all the way to where the bald line starts. I want to go a little below where I set in the, the guideline with the clipper. So that way it doesn't make it too hard of a line. So it's easier for us to blend out when we go back in with the clipper and we end up fading that out. Also, I'm trying to not create another line with the shaver. And so sometimes if you're just holding it straight like the way I'm holding it right now, might set in another guideline. So what you want to do is you'll see me doing it here. I'll kind of press, um, I'll get close to the top of the line, but not right at it. And I'll kind of just like lightly tap it. And when I do this, I don't really put in that much pressure. I don't put that much pressure at all. Actually, I only put a little bit and it'll just help blend out whatever line you're creating with the shaver. If you are creating a line, chances are you will create a line. So you just want to lightly press it, or you could also use the corner of it and blend it out that way too. So now we're starting with the clipper open. This is where the fading actually starts. And you wanna create another guideline around like a finger's length. You see me putting my finger here just for reference. Sometimes you could go, you can make it wider. Sometimes you can make it like a little shorter. It just depends on like what look you're going for in the fade. And in terms of uh, this fade, my client likes it dark on the sides and so the more compressed the guidelines are, the darker it'll be at the top and the darker the fade's gonna look. But I would suggest if you're starting off, if you're a beginner, make your guidelines wider. You don't have to compress it in a little small section because chances are you are going to get lost and it's very difficult to blend out smaller sections rather than larger sections. And so here I'm just going all the way around clipper open like I said before, I'm just making sure that I'm keeping the same width all the way around, like I said. It's just keeping your guidelines the same width, keeping your bald line symmetrical. That's what's gonna make the fade come out clean. And so now what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna close the clipper two notches down and every clipper is different, right? Um, some clippers open up more than others, but 
minds has a, a click mechanism to it so if you have a click mechanism click it twice or just close it just a tad bit a little bit more than a quarter so not halfway just a little bit more than a quarter and now we're pretty much only blending under the line that we had already created like i said kind of like the previous steps not going up to the line that we already created but going a little bit under here i have it a little more closed a little bit past halfway but not fully closed and i'm just trying to blend out the line at the bottom which would be the bald line so in reality all you're doing when you're fading is creating guidelines and then erasing everything under it in this case the reason why i say this is the simplest way is because i don't go creating my open guard guideline my one guard guideline my 1.5 my two and then blend it all out at the end i find that to be super super tricky and i think if you're a beginner it's extremely hard to keep up with that because you have no idea what guideline you even set when you go back to blend it out so my way of fading is just creating that one single guideline in this case we created the bald line and here we're going in with the open and pretty much just blending everything under the open right we're gonna be erasing the bald line and everything between the bald line and the open is going to be erased in this step that we're doing right now and like i said we're going all around the head we're not just doing one portion of the head because that'll confuse you it'll be too tricky it's better to do everything all at once especially when you're starting off as a beginner so then when you're done blending out the bald line and everything under the open go in with the 1.5 and create a pretty big guideline um as you can see here i'm going up maybe around an inch to an inch and a half with the 1.5 this is kind of just going to clear out a lot of the bulk that he has which he doesn't have much bulk sometimes you have to go in with a bigger guard if you want to keep it darker at the top in this case i think a 1.5 is is going to keep it dark enough but we're just going to go with the 1.5 open first and slowly start closing it everything under uh the, the 1.5 open we're just going to start slowly closing it until we get fully closed all the way uh, same process that we did with the with the previous guideline and right here i am working on just this side of the head so in this section like i said it's better to do a 1.5 all around 1.5 uh halfway closed all around or two two fifths closed all around it's better to do everything all in one step all around the head but just in this case uh i couldn't keep his head in frame so i just started working in sections but this is pretty much it's the same concept just to make a big guideline with the 1.5 and blend everything under the 1.5 and as you could also tell like his hair is not very long so it's kind of blending almost right into the 1.5 there's a little bit of bulk left but since his hair is not that long the 1.5 is doing a good job of blending right into the bulk now this is going to vary depending on how much hair your client has and here's just an example of how i'm holding the clipper and flicking it out make sure you always flick out the clipper guys in order to not create more guidelines than you want to you don't want to apply too much pressure and when you do apply pressure you want to always flick out at the end and so here i am now with my one open guard and like i said just flicking out trying not to create another line not going too high either i'm going below what i made the 1.5 every single time you take a guard out that's shorter than what you were already cutting with. Remember, you're you're cutting below that. You can't cut any higher. Otherwise, you're going to create more guidelines. And if you do create a guideline, guys, it's normal. It happens. Just go back in with whatever you set that guideline in with, whether it's a 1.5 or the 1, and just blend it out. Uh, here, I'm using a lot of my corners because now we're getting more into the detail work. And now, guys, I have the 0 0.5 two, two fifth of the way closed. And I'm pretty much just closing it and opening it at this point, doing a little bit of lever play, which is just trying to flick out that last line that we have there. Um, you'll see that I close it a little bit more here and a little bit more there. Um, now I have it all the way closed or my bad. I have it um, on the lever before the last one. I'm pretty much just trying to knock out that last line. And you guys will see I'm using my corners now. I'm not using the whole blade. The reason for that is because since we only have that last line left, we don't want to risk making another line. And so the best thing to do is just to use your corners and flick out, guys. You'll keep using your corners anytime it gets to small details, uh, like in this case, how we're just trying to knock out like one little line. And then you could set your guidelines like we did normally flat on the head without having to use the corner. But you'll see it, it, it comes in very handy. It's very useful. 
and this is where the fade starts to actually pop out where the fade actually becomes blurry and where you can see everything blending away it's when you start using the corners towards the end so i want you guys to notice here i took off the guard and now it's open blade uh no guard just using the corner i'm opening and closing but be very careful here this is just for the final touches, the final details, any little dark spot that you see. But be very careful because this is a very easy way to patch somebody and give them a light spot. So be very, very gentle, very light handed and only use the corner. Do not go up too high. And as I was finishing the fade, I saw that the top was just a little too dense. I saw that it was just a little too dark for my liking. So I went back in with a two guard open and then like every other step, slowly closing it until I was able to blend out that, that kind of like dense area. And this was all around the head as well. So, and guys, as much as you follow my steps, at the end of the day, in barbering, it comes down to experience. Experience is gonna mean everything. And it's what's going to increase your attention to detail. And so this was the finished result, guys. My client, he has very tricky hair to fade. So take that into consideration, guys. Everybody has different hair. For that reason, even if you follow my steps, you're always going to have to add some sort of detail, your own touch to the haircut. And I hope this video helped you guys. If it did, please leave a comment. Let me know. And um, if you have any more questions, let me know in the comments. Peace out. God bless.